Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Sandra Quinones. I'll be your worship leader this morning. And our speaker today is Elder D. Ellen Wood. Welcome. Please join me in the words of welcome and call to worship to be said responsively. Our help is in the name of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. And now our opening hymn, number 174.
And now our prayer of confession to be said in unison. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. A God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him, Jesus Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. And now, since the Lord loves and welcomes us, we shall love and welcome one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Please stand as you're able and greet your neighbors. for illumination. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this day gathering as one the body of Christ, uniting, showing force, showing love, showing fellowship. We ask you, Lord God, to open us up today that we may hear your holy words, the things you wish to impart to us, to who we are, what we're going through. Open up the revelation, Lord, that only you can. We ask, Lord God, that your son be a fine example, and that we may hear his actions, his words, and apply it to our life. And the Holy Spirit that is forever surrounding us, no matter where we go, what we go through, who we're with, we thank you, Lord God, that you are always here with us and ask, in the reading of your word, that you open up something in ourselves, and that may we, that we abide within you in his holy word. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
And now a reading of our word. I will read the Old Testament and our speaker will read the New Testament. Our first reading is from Proverbs 1 through 20. Proverbs 1, 20 to 33. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the bus busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will the scoffers delight in their scoffing? And fools hate knowledge. Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stressed out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof, therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. Our second reading is Psalm 19, one through 14. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament pro proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. That ends the reading of the First Testament. Our next scripture reading is found in the New Testament. If you care to follow along in your pew Bibles or in your personal Bibles, we are reading James chapter three. Again, that's in the New Testament, James chapter three, reading verses one through 12. Taming the tongue. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach 
will be judged with greater strictness, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at the ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Our next New Testament scripture reading will be in the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, verses 27 through 38. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way, he asked his disciples, who do the people say I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah, and he, and he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words, 
in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. The word of God for people of God. Good morning. Again, I am the, uh, an elder of the White Plains Presbyterian Church. I've been here since about the year 2000. Uh, I initially come from the state of Idaho, uh, from my Nez Perce reservation. Uh, I grew up Presbyterian myself. My, uh, both sides of my family are Presbyterian, and I am grateful to be among you all today. I'm definitely grateful to be among the choir today. Our leader, Sandra, uh, gives me confidence. Uh, I always get nervous when I address the children of God. Uh, if I may, I would like to start out again with another prayer. Heavenly Father, bless us in our gathering this morning that your wisdom and your word is heard and learned by your own divine relationship with each of us. Lead us in our own places in life where we find ourselves in needs in various ways. You know our thoughts, fears, joys, and hope. We ask that you reach within us to deliver your peace, your will, and your salvation in understanding you. With these fervent hearts and ears, we seek you now. Open us to your divinity. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray to you. Amen. Do not forget my teachings. Prolong your life many years. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. The book of Proverbs is awesome, an awesome spiritual guidance. I read that statement and one of the key words that popped out at me was the verb let. Webster's Dictionary describes the meaning as to free from or as if from confinement. Also, to permit to enter, pass, or leave. My thoughts were, those gifts are always within me, always. I just need to let the act according to God spoken direct me. Matthew Henry's commentary on these scriptures is that God calls to us by wisdom. By whom God calls us, calls to us by wisdom, it is wisdom that crieth out. The word is plural, wisdoms, for as there is an infinite wisdom in God, so there is the manifold of wisdom of God. God speaks to the children of men by all kinds of wisdom, and as in every will, so in every word of God there is a counsel. One, human understanding. Two, civil government. Three, divine revelation, and four, Christ. I immediately think of the Gospel of John. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Through Christ, we have knowledge that God knows how he knows his created, blessed children live. How we live, how we suffer, mourn, rejoice, praise, he has full knowledge of the bearing of human life. Matthew Henry reminds us of King David. We must note how God counsels through his anointed kings, judges, prophets. God has provided his written word through his commandments bestowed and entrusted to Moses for all to learn and live for accordingly. Max Lucado shared his inspiration on these passages as, the scriptures are teaching on wisdom, and I've come up with this. 
Wisdom is the God-given ability to see life with rare objectivity and to handle life with rare stability. Remember the saying or the song about the rose-colored glasses? Wikipedia says this may refer to optimism, the tendency to see things in a positive light, or rosy retrospection, the tendency to view past events in a positive light, or, of course, rose-tinted glasses invented by a woman called Joss in 1846. I think of this rose-colored glasses as a statement on how some in the past thought how to view life more lightheartedly. In the same line of thinking, shouldn't the children of God see life through God's love, guidance, and his pathway? We could save ourselves from much hardship and stress by reading his word, living by his commandments, and seeing and feeling a joy so indescribable. Max Lucado, a wonderful pastor, he further inspired on this passage as operating in the sphere of life, God is like him working in our mind and in our life. What do we hear when we walk into a school event, work parties or theaters or music concerts? We hear spoken thoughts or opinions of those around us or focused in on opera or song or the story of a movie. We are quite literally filtering life and opinions and emotions through our mind, body, and spirit as it is happening. Those we choose to hear, those, we may, those that may be shouting out loud, are those that we read. I often tell the children in my family the gift of God is so tremendous and full of responsibility, but freeing all at the same time. I come from a family that enjoys horror films and thrillers that make you suspicious of what mankind is capable of. All very settling, I know. But again, it's a choice. As I grew up both physically and spiritually, I tend not to prioritize those or make them my first choice in entertainment. When it comes to music, like many people, I can catch myself singing secular music, but with words I'm sure are not a part of the actual lyrics of the song. But they're harmless and amusing and quite unrelated to the actual theme of the song. We have to remember that the world is home to so many different people with different joys and different woes. Some struggles are expressed in songs which may penetrate our own sense of reason. I try to make these distinctions of song lyrics to my children so they are not easily swayed into someone else's sorrows or distaste in their own choices. Again, it is their own words and adjectives put into song which we may, which we may find ourselves singing and sometimes not taking the time to recognize the overall theme of what they are conveying through music. Please understand I love music of many genres and would not ask anyone to avoid secular music. King David himself loved music and written many songs and many emotions and lamentations. Certainly we very well know, may take some solace in knowing even someone so dear to the Almighty God has walked some frightening or sorrowful paths, but God's counsel to guide and comfort him. These words are warning and guidance by God through the book of Proverbs, state simply that his word and his structure is always available to reread, to recall, to retell, re-engage, so that life is enjoyed as he would love for us to experience. The Holy Trinity is not man-made, cannot be destroyed, or remade to suit someone's preference. No, God never changes, which should be the awesome comfort, as he is love, 
caring, compassion, forgiveness, patience, all-knowing, and is everywhere. When we are feeling low or out of place, trust that God can never be shocked and cannot be surprised by what we are afraid to confess to him. He is ready with understanding, forgiveness, and ready to dust us off and get us back into joy and happiness. Caution is a wonderful theme for today as we hear this in Proverbs, Psalms, and the book of James. We are gifted this life and have counsel to guide us through. The scripture from James today, I have found myself recalling over the past several months now, as we are in the midst of American presidential election year and have been hearing from a wide spectrum of evangelicals. Believe me, I'm certain I'm not the only, only one alone in the confusion of some of, the, some of those distinguishing themselves as such. The book of James warns us, brothers and sisters in Christ, that becoming a teacher in the ways of Christ they will be judged with greater strictness. James's example of the horse bit governs the horse's movement and the rudder of a vehicle for the pilot or sailor that steals a lar- steers a large vessel. So also is the tongue. The calling to become a teacher for the Holy Trinity has to be weighed carefully and prayed over for this solemn endeavor. My mother had often spoke of this passage when it came to taking vows to become a deacon, becoming an elder. She was so very moved when both my sister Diane and I had taken those vows to our God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. She reminded us of our lives. They should be devoted and aligned in God's way and not to suit the lives we want God to change for our own wishes. When our congregation puts the prayer requests in to pray over our church leaders here and at large, it is supremely compassionate. Being a church leader or teacher for God has ultimate responsibility and duty that can be intimidating but also so extremely rewarding. When lives can be rededicated to God, it is through true divinity that has transpired through God's anointed teachers. Along with the solemn vow comes the caution of James, describes as one of tongues can be a fire, setting a blaze. Eugene Peterson, Presbyterian scholar and theologian, translated and paraphrased the Bible known as the message, in which he aptly cites the passage, quote, with our tongues, we bless God our Father. With the same tongues, we curse the very men and women he made in his image. Curses and blessings out of the same mouth, unquote. John Calvin commentary explains, many thrust themselves into this role as an innate disease of mankind to seek reputation by blaming others. He shares some excel, some excel in wisdom and some less influenced by the right feeling for hypocrisy and ambition stimulate them and not a care for the salvation of their brethren. For he notes, James does not discourage those brotherly admonitions that the Spirit so often and so much recommends to us, but that the exceeding need to condemn which proceeds from what he may turn to a sinister purpose, for this is usually done when impertinent censors of this kind insolently boast themselves in the work of exposing the vices of others. We have been warned in the letters in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. 
For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say which their itching ears want to hear. Our teachers of the way of Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the Holy Spirit, is found in God's holy book, the Bible. As children of God, our best references and guides should forever align within his teachings. Christ has told us that we can find God's people by the love they have for one another. Let us be diligent in demonstrating the fruits of the Spirit and love of God in our actions and our speech. We have been blessed that God has so loved us, he sent his only begotten son. Who better to share what God wants from us than his son? Proverbs 8, chapter 8, tells us how so very long ago, in the beginning, when he was formed, and how prosperity derives in him. Verses 32 through 36, he shares... Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me find life and receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me harm themselves. All who hate me love death. How heartfelt and honest and encouraging for us. He tells us where we ought to be, watching daily at his door, waiting at his doorway. Every pastor who has stood before us through Christ tells us how we can each please our God and how to help one another find his way to a life designed by holiness. In the Gospel of Mark, we are assured who Jesus is, the Messiah. As in today's world, many have different perspectives and faiths. But Christ has endured all that he foretold, the great suffering, being rejected by elders, chief priests, the scribes, and then death. A sacrifice like no other, and teaches all those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Christ Jesus also demonstrated that the enemy of God works through everyone he is able, even the ever-devout disciple Peter, when he thought if they could help Jesus avoid persecution and stay alive, Jesus, loving the lives and spirit of all his children of God, which God gave him, told the enemy, speaking with the tongue of Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. One of my favorite passages that I need to timelessly recall can be found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Eugene Peterson of The Message paraphrases the scripture as, quote, the world is unprincipled. It's dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair, but we don't live or fight our battles that way never have and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation. 
but they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of the life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. Let us take up our cross and follow Christ in the way of God's counsels, the way God's counsels teach us to. In this world we now live, we encounter many temptations, many calls to someone with different intentions opposite of God's commandments, many easy way outs, many shortcuts that are not honest or illegal. Let us all stay steadfast in prayer, fellowship, loving our neighbors, being available for one another. We are never alone. God is almighty. God is omnipotent, omni omniscient, and omnipresent. The Holy Trinity has created the universe, heavens, all creatures here below. There is nothing beyond the scope and love of God. Believe in him, trust in him, pray to him, and abide in him. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let it be so. Amen. Our next hymn is number 14, For the Beauty of the Earth. At this time, the ushers will collect the pink slips that you can find in your pews. If you want to write down any prayer requests, that we can lift to God together as the body of Christ to petition for his support, his help. Again, uh, hymn number 14.
Okay, let us turn to prayer. Let us turn to God in prayer for our concerns of the church and those at large. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, again for always standing with us, near us, going before us, and watching from behind. We thank you for the love of fellowship, being able to come together and feeling the body of Christ, the Holy Church, knowing that each one of us here shares in your holy word. We ask you, Lord God, to incline your ear to the prayers and concerns and joys that our congregation shares today. Lord, we have a congregation that is happy, that wishes and prays for happiness and healthy family. Prayers for safety and safe travels. Prayers for peace of mind and peace among nations. Prayers to end of war. end of wars, end of conflicts, prayers to help a senior, prayers for a, a relationship, a relationship between two people, prayers for school, prayers for work, prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of patience, prayers of blessed day and week, prayers for good medical results, and prayers for a friend in hospice care. We thank you, Lord God, that you do address these with us all. We ask you, Lord God, to, again, the prayers of a congregant that wants to tell you, thank you, Lord, for work. You're, you always provide in the nick of time. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing this congregant here, Lord. There's also a request to pray for the people of Palestine, Palestine and Lebanon in the end of the Palestinian genocide. We ask you, Lord God, to make your presence known among them, Lord God, for those with differences, with conflicts, with wrongful intent for evil. Lord God, we ask you to be with these leaders that are guiding in these conflicts, Lord God. Be with the leaders that they may see right, see your way, see the wisdom in peace and charity. Lord God, we ask you to be with our brother Steve Lewin in the hospital. We ask you, Lord God, to be with Sharon Kay, has upper respiratory infection. We ask you, Lord God, to be with them both we thank you for those that lift up the prayers of loved ones, for friends, for co-workers. There are so many in our individual lives, Lord God, that we think on a day-to-day -day basis that we ask you for help. We petition the, your, the prayers of those that cannot be here today. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence and your love and your healing upon them, Lord God. We're also praying for the well-paying jobs for a son. Prayers of gratitude, thanking God for past and future answered prayers. Lord God, it's, we often go by day by day and forgive us when we forget to, to give you thanks, but we feel it. We hope you feel it. We thank you, Lord God, that you are always there and always on time. 
their prayers. Lord, I pray that they stop being sick. We ask you, Lord God, to lay your hand upon our brother or sister out there and all those that are suffering from an illness, that are awaiting doctor's results, those that are impending surgeries, for those that may be in the hospital healing and recovering. We thank you, Lord God, that you cover them with your loving hands. We ask for traveling mercies, Lord God, for all those that are traveling this weekend or this week or the past week on vacations for paid time off. We thank you, Lord God, that no matter where we are in life, you are there. You are there before we even think of our needs. We thank you, Lord God, that you travel with us, that you walk with us, that you are involved in our rejoicing, that you are there in our celebrations, but you're also there when we need you, when we're hurting, when we're feeling lonely, when we're feeling lost, when we're sympathizing with another. We thank you for those spirits, like the song artist John Bon Jovi who helped someone that was feeling so low and prevented some dangerous harm. We thank you for all of those that go out of their way that may feel uncomfortable, but they help those in need. Blessed are those, Lord, that do your work with their hands, with their hearts, with their voices, with their songs, with their visits. Lord God, be with us in this week as we journey forth that we remember your cautions, your warnings, but also the salvation that you guide us toward. Strengthen us in our will, strengthen us in our spirit. Strengthen us to open up your Bibles as often as we can to learn your ways, to become more familiar with it and share with those that are hurting, those of them that are curious, that have not heard of Christ or those that maybe need to be reminded of who the Holy Trinity is, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to not only bless this church, bless these church leaders, but the entire body of Christ around the world for those that are suffering in the wars such as Ukraine and Palestine and we, Lord God, for all these conflicts. We ask for peace. We ask for your peace. We ask for your forgiveness and your acceptance and your guidance. Lord, we pray in the way Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we will um, enjoy the worship of God with tithes and offerings.
And now the prayer of dedication. God of creation, we praise you. We offer these gifts with gratitude and humility, knowing that all we have comes from your generous and loving hands. May these gifts abundantly bless the work of your kingdom and spread your love throughout this world. Amen. Please join us in our sending hymn number 265. Creator of all, may we be a vessel of your divine love and divine light in this world. Bless us with the courage and faith to be your devoted servants in a world that is in need of your love. May it be so, now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 